All right, guys, got a little Yale here. This is from Matt Pierre up in Charlo, Montana, another one of his challenge locks. It says, this is a challenge lock, but he never managed to get it open. Um, and if I do, I notice there's no clip on the back of here. I got to be careful. There's no key for this one. Eh, that's okay. We don't need no stinking key. L let's take a look at the keyway, though, just very quickly. Um, this is a tough keyway. Uh, especially since it's a challenge lock, I know there's going to be a lot of high-low, high-low. The thing about it, though, if I can find a pick here, let me grab one of my new guys. This is a 15,000, the medium hook from the SS Dev. I'll probably start off with him. You can actually pick from the bottom, even though that piece of warding is right there, because there's a hole through the warding that'll allow you to get in there almost the entire way. There is some dragging, so probably, and these are very fragile picks, I may end up bending this. I've ruined a few of these, but sometimes it's the only pick that'll give you access to these, particularly if it's got a very high cut one in the very back. You've really got to put some tension on it, especially if he's got security pins like spools in here. So you may see me break or bend a pick in, in this one. We'll find out. I'm trying to see if the springs have done anything to me. I don't feel anything bad on springs. So let me go ahead. I'm going to use top of the keyway, and that way I can work from the bottom. At least we're going to start out. If, if this isn't enough, I may have to try have him here. His big brother, the really deep hook. It's almost like a postal hook, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to squeeze in this, particularly if there's a low cut one, you know, somewhere between the front and the back, if the back one is really high cut, which it almost assuredly is because it is, after all, a challenge log, right? All right, let me clamp it up and let's stop flapping my lips. All right, guys, I got to tell you, this is a tough little lock. If I've managed to almost destroy this pick twice, this is my third attempt on this thing. This pick was almost bent straight. You can see it's pretty mangled up. I'm going to keep going with it at least until it breaks. Um, I've got top of the keyway. You see I got a line on there and I picked it twice, tried to pick it twice and the clockwise this time I'm going to try counterclockwise if that makes a bit of difference. Instead of starting off with this thin one, I'm going to start off with the deep hook from the SS Dev, also 15,000th. All right, light tension. Best I've gotten out of this thing so far is a false set. Even a 15,000th is getting caught up back there. I'm going to try. I'm going to vary another variable. How about that? <clears throat> Deeper hook is 13,000. This is by Rare Elements. See if he gets... Yeah, he's dragging too. But he's the thinnest one that I have. Okay, that was pin 6. Looking for another binder. Pin two. Okay, I got a little fault set out of that. I heard nothing. He just kind of eased into place. That is pin five. I'm getting some counter rotation. And now I've lost a false set. Let me check pin one. There we go. So it was pin one. He's a gatekeeper. Let me go back there and check five now. I think five is set. Okay, that was... Was that pin one or pin two? Definitely counter-rotation. But even this hook is not reaching up high enough. All right, what other options do I have here? Hmm. Since it's the first pin, I'm going to take this 25 thousandths because I don't have to get under them. I don't have to negotiate the keyway very much. Now I get nothing. All right. Probably my imagination. You know, as I get older, this happened with me with increasing frequency. Okay, there's five again. Let me double check. Let 
Definitely five is giving me a little bit of counter rotation there. Come on. All right, again, he just kind of eased into place. I didn't hear any solid clicking. There's some counter rotation on pin two. Whoa, I will take it. All right, <clears throat> let's see what we got. There is no, I don't know if you noticed that, but that core almost popped out of there as I got it picked. There is no tailpiece on this. Let's go ahead and back the camera out. And let us see what Matt has done to us. All right, we're up to the Jeep tray again. I cannot lock this, so we just got to go like this. I'm going to turn it like that. I am going to, because I believe it probably does have T-pins, the way it was behaving, things kind of slopping into place. I'm going to try to put him right here. The tolerance is so tight, I can't even get a shim in there. Oh, there we go. All right. Woo! Man, that was tight. All right, so we've hit that little gap has been bridged by our follower. And not that guy. We'll take this one. And don't screw this up. All right, that looks pretty rough. I got to tell you, I don't see any threading right off the bat. We got a couple of anti-drill pins there, so it's interesting. It's quality lock. Standard, standard. If this is all standards, oh gosh, I can't believe it. That would be irritating, wouldn't it? These are all standards, every single one of these guys. And there's why number six was so hard to get. Look at how long they are. I mean, we don't have a key to look at, but uh, long pins. And it looks like there's some remnant there, but I don't believe that's undercutting or anything. That's just a remnant, I believe, from manufacturing. Yeah, there's no ridge there. That was just a polish mark or a machine mark. All right, there better be something in here. That better be. <laughs> All right, what do we got? And we have a standard pin. This is looking really bad for Bill. All right, number two. We have a spool. I'm going to leave that spring in place. Number three, another spool. Number four, another spool. All right, let's take a look at number six. Not sure if that's any better. A standard. Are you kidding me? All spools. There's my shim. I'm going to have to say, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. We got all the springs. I'm going to have to say this is a stock Yale. I, I really don't understand why it was so rough. We have a, I'm going to put these guys up here. Pretty much everything in it was a standard pin except for these five guys. Slightly different lengths, but the depth on all of these is pretty much the same. Wouldn't be a lot of feedback because it's such a narrow, um, such a shallow cut on these spools. Number three looks, or I'm sorry, number four looks to be just a little bit deeper, but nothing special about it. I don't believe anything is in the core. Nope. 
no threading, and it'd be really difficult to do without removing these plugs. You'd really be able to tell if uh, uh, Matt had modded those. Anyway, there you go, guys. The mysterious, mysteriously difficult Yale. Nothing to it, guys. Thanks, Matt. Everybody stay safe. Stay legal.